Hello, ako po si Kat Ventura, and you're listening to Teka Teka, Balitang Thinking, Hindi Breaking. In today's episode, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. We talk about monkeypox, what it does to our health, and how we can prevent it from spreading. So in short, we have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. That was Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, World Health Organization Director General, sounding the alarm over monkeypox in a press briefing on July 23. Less than a week after WHO's announcement, the Philippines confirmed its first detected case of the virus in the country, involving a 31-year-old who recently traveled to a country with documented cases of monkeypox. Ten of the individual's close contacts were quarantined. None of them had any symptoms. Monkeypox is not new to the world, so there is much that scientists already know about it. We spoke to Dr. Ronjean Solante, a leading infectious disease expert in the Philippines. Monkeypox is a viral infection that usually starts with fever, and then you have swollen lymph nodes, you have headache, you have fatigue, and then three to five days after those symptoms, there are characteristic skin lesions that will appear in the body. And usually it starts in the face and then goes down to the trunk and then to the extremities, down to the lower part of the body. And that type of symptoms usually two to four weeks. The duration of the symptoms usually two to four weeks. Dr. Solante says that while monkeypox has been around for decades, particularly in parts of West and Central Africa, the ongoing outbreak poses new challenges. The difference with this new outbreak now is that these are occurring in non-endemic countries. And uh, currently in the global data, it's United States having the most cases, followed by Spain, United Kingdom, then you have Germany and Canada, where you don't see these exotic animals infected that are the carriers or the infected animals that are causing the transmission to human. So there's a human-to-human transmission. The World Health Organization says 98% of monkeypox cases detected so far are men who engage in sexual activity with other men. But Dr. Solante says it would be misleading to call it an STD. And it would be wrong and dangerous to ascribe it to any one sector or allow it to be used to stigmatize or discriminate against an already vulnerable community. We should not label this monkeypox as an infection among these gay bisexuals or the men who had sex with men or even HIV. Because anyone can get a monkeypox virus. So anybody or anyone. As long as there is close, intimate contact happening between the person having the monkeypox and the other one that is not having the monkeypox. Just so happened that at this point in time, most of those infected are this group of individuals. And it's not just Dr. Solante. WHO's Dr. Gabriesus made the same point. The focus for all countries must be engaging and empowering communities of men who have sex with men to reduce the risk of infection and onward transmission, to provide care for those infected, and to safeguard human rights and dignity. The stigma and discrimination can be as dangerous as any virus and can fuel the outbreak. Understanding that anybody can get infected, Dr. Solata says people should know the risks and behaviors that increase those risks. The fatality rate for monkeypox is much lower than what we've seen with COVID. The strain from West Africa that is spreading has a fatality rate of less than 1%. Monkeypox is also much harder to contract. It does not spread as easily as COVID does. Now, the mode of transmission here is totally different from that of COVID-19 because you need close, prolonged contact with an individual. And that will really be something that most of us should be aware. You just can't get this infection by walking and then meeting somebody 
no, it's not. Unlike COVID-19, it's important that contact precaution and at the same time, respiratory precaution should be in our, should be part of our livelihood. Another key difference too is that the isolation period for monkeypox is much longer compared to COVID-19, stretching on for three to four weeks for those who have been exposed to the virus and are symptomatic. Even up to the time that rashes or the skin lesion becomes a scab and ulcerating and it seems like it's already dry, you can still be infectious. So remember that date, the date is 21 days to a minimum to a maximum of 28 days isolation period. That said, like any other virus, monkeypox is self-limiting. In other words, it dies out on its own. The challenge then is letting it self-limit before it infects others, breaking the chain of transmission. So the general treatment is it's a self-limited disease, okay? And most of the time there is healing of the lesions on the fourth to fifth week and rarely will lead into complications except except if you are immunocompromised. Wherein some of these individuals cannot really uh, control how the virus will replicate in their body. And that's why there are those reports that uh, it can lead to encephalitis, it can lead to pneumonia, it can lead to uh, bacterial infection, aside from having the viral infection, conditions that can also increase the risk of mortality. There are already vaccines against monkeypox, but because the virus had not until now spread to this many countries, access to the vaccine are also limited for now. Very limited supply yet at this point in time. And in fact, it's only available in countries where they stockpile vaccines for smallpox no? because they have that capability to stockpile it like U.S. and some European countries. But I think the manufacturer of this vaccine now is being told to manufacture more supply so that in the event that other countries will really need this, then there should be supply. And Dr. Solante also says that when the vaccines become available, unlike COVID, it won't necessarily be for everyone. Vaccination forms part of an important intervention to break the chain of transmission. And that without vaccine, is a two-dose vaccine that is given 28 days apart, which is effective among individuals who will be exposed to monkeypox and for those who have risks of exposure also to monkeypox. So these are the two target groups of the vaccines, and it's not a vaccine for the general population. So given all this, what can we do? Actually, you already know what to do. And this is thanks to COVID. Well, one is that you have to wear your face mask as always, especially in areas where you are not so sure of people whom you are meeting with. That's the first rule. Second, you have to wash your hands and don't just touch anything else in that room or touch a person, especially with skin manifestations. Contact precaution is an important matter in terms of not getting the infection. And third, if you are symptomatic, if you have the symptoms, then right away isolate yourself so you will not be infecting other people. Dr. Solante also urged the government to take immediate action now that the virus has been detected in the country. First is really raising the awareness in the community. The Department of Health should be working with the local government unit to enhance information dissemination about monkeypox and enhance steps and measures on how to stop human-to-human transmission at the level of the community. Second is that we have to enhance the capacity of the healthcare workers also to detect monkeypox, no? especially the clinics, the wards, the emergency rooms, including sexual health clinics, HIV clinic, and STD clinics. There should be greater awareness now that if somebody comes to the clinic and with skin lesions, especially with fever, then part of the differential should also be ruling out and diagnosing the presence of monkeypox. His final recommendation to the government might sound familiar as well. Once again, we'll need to up our capacity for testing and contact tracing. Number three, we have to have the capacity to diagnose monkeypox because otherwise we cannot just diagnose it based on clinical manifestations. 
And right now, we only have two referral centers that can diagnose monkeypox. That's RITM and the Philippine Genome Center. And I hope the government could extend also other centers like private hospitals, private laboratories that can be accessible to anybody who may have the symptoms and have himself tested so that we will know the real story, the real score of the monkeypox situation in the Philippines. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka. Again, I'm Kat Ventura. This episode was written by Bella Perez Rubio and edited by Joe Salcedo. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to leave us a 5-star rating on your podcast app. It really helps get the word out about our show. Maraming salamat po. <laughs>